Hi, I'm Shannon Binns, the executive director and founder of Sustain Charlotte. We're a local nonprofit. Uh, I'm Eric Zverl. I'm the uh, urban design specialist here at Sustain Charlotte. Work with um, a lot of the policy, uh, comprehensive plan, uh, and lead bike tours and things like that that we do around the city. Yeah, so I was saying Sustain Charlotte is a local nonprofit. We do a lot of advocacy for active transportation, compact, walkable, mixed use development. Uh, really trying to move us away from sprawl and advance as many of the uh, new urbanist principles as possible. So we do that in a number of ways. We advocate and engage uh, residents directly in advocacy um, to lift their voices and make sure our elected officials and, and local staff know uh, we want more opportunities to safely walk and bike and get around by transit, get around without having to get into a car for every trip. We also focus a lot on um, parks and greenways um, and do a lot of advocacy around that. And of course, we do lots of fun events, um, getting people out um, on bikes, on foot, to explore greenways, to explore uh, the infrastructure that we, ha that we do have and have been able to get built. So it's a little bit about us. And today, we're going to be showing off some of the uh, advocacy work we've done over the, the last several years to make uh, the ability to be able to get around other than by car in Charlotte. And we're going to be leading the folks at CNU um, and showing off some protected bike lanes, the Uptown Cycle Link that we helped uh, work with the city to demo and uh, help prove that it was possible to provide a lane to cyclists through the city and connect two segments of the Greenway. Uh, we will continue down on the Greenway, which is now going to be part of the Cross Charlotte Trail that will go across all of Mecklenburg County from uh, the south to the north. Uh, and then we'll show off one of the last, uh, and uh, still in progress, but m most of it is complete, a road diet on Park uh, Wood Avenue that um, slows down that road and provides a uh, way of connecting neighborhoods to the light rail station uh, and provides a safer experience uh, for folks. We're on, and then we'll finish it up by going through uh, a neighborhood, Plaza Midwood neighborhood, where we were able to take the road from four lanes down to two and provide a nice protected uh, buffered bike lane with uh, planters and then we will go through a newly completed segment of our oldest park in um, Charlotte, it's Independence Park, and then we'll finish it up by coming through uptown and uh, bringing folks back to uh, to the Westin. Everyone, you want to, can you come in a little bit closer? All right. Good morning, welcome. Beautiful day for a bike ride, huh? Yes. Yeah. So my name is Shannon. I'm one of your ride leaders. We also have Eric over here in the flashing helmet. And Clint will be our sweeper, making sure everybody, no, nobody gets left behind. We're gonna see a few different types of infrastructure today. So our first segment here, we're gonna be on street without any bicycle infrastructure. Just for, I don't know, probably four or five blocks, something like that. And then we're gonna get onto a two-way protected bike lane that is kind of the signature infrastructure that we have in downtown Charlotte. And the organization that Eric and I work for, um, Sustain Charlotte, which is a local advocacy organization. We're a nonprofit that basically advocates for new urbanist principles. We petitioned the city to build this protected bike lane we'll be on back in 2015. And um, last year it opened and it spans all of downtown east and west. So we're gonna be going north and south initially we don't have that same facility north and south, but we'll be on one going when we start heading east, and it's pretty nice. It's all part of the uh, what they're calling the Uptown Cycle Link, and uh, we partnered with the city uh, a couple years back uh, to do our, our signature event called Biketoberfest, and we were able to demo what you see today is the cycle link that's there. We were able to de demo that with hay bales and planters and uh, paint. We painted the intersections, and they left it up for a week to be able to a proof of concept that you know the city didn't fall apart by taking a car away from a lane away from cars. Um, it provided a new connection uh, from the greenways to get through uptown, and after that, uh, we were able to get all of that built. And that's kind of like what we enjoy doing is getting folks uh, out biking, seeing the city differently. Uh, an infrastructure that wasn't here yesterday, that is here today, uh, so then they become advocates to build more.
Okay, can everybody hear me? Can you hear me in the back? Yep. All right, we wanted to stop here because obviously we've, uh, we've left the greenway, right? And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna follow this protected bike lane, I should say partially protected bike lane up this hill because this is another project where Sustain Charlotte partnered with the adjacent neighborhoods and petitioned the city to do a road diet with protected bike lanes as a result of um, an elderly man, a 71-year-old man um, named Al Gorman was riding his bike on, on this sidewalk to a laundromat back in 2015. At one of the intersections up here, there was a collision of two cars. One of them spun and hit and killed Al. And we felt like this, there was, within the previous year, um, a young man had been hit, permanently injured, you know, um, a lot of damage to his leg. There was just lots of people getting hit on this road. And so we, we felt something should be done to change the design so it was less dangerous. So what we're gonna experience is the design that um, was put in place, obviously. And because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of homes on this street, there's a lot of residences, single family homes, there's a lot of driveways. So there's not as much vertical barrier and protection as we would have ideally liked, but there's a lot of cuts for the driveways. So it's gonna be a little bit of a climb here, but you know, this is probably the worst part of it. And then it starts to flatten out a little bit. When we get to, um, there's a point where we're gonna intersect with another road called the Plaza. The petition for Parkwood inspired and another neighborhood to, to petition the city for one of these on their road. And we're gonna take that road as well. That's called the plaza. So when we get to the top and the end of this, this cycle track, this protected bike lane, we're gonna turn right onto another one that's even better. It's got uh, planters that the neighborhood, I believe, is responsible for maintaining. Um, but it's a really nice tree-lined street with a really beautiful protected bike lane, which precedes this one. They actually were able to get theirs done faster so we're gonna see two different protected bike lanes. Both of them were the result of neighborhoods organizing and asking the city, please make our streets safer. So right now this segment goes from where we just got on here at Davidson Street all the way up to the plaza. And then the plaza, like I said, will have one as well. And then we're gonna cruise from there through um, one of the coolest neighborhoods, in my opinion, in Charlotte called Plaza Midwood. It's got a really cool business district. <laughs> basically where I live. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of cool little coffee shops and restaurants. It's, re it's, it's one of the few walkable districts, retail districts in Charlotte. Um, we don't have a lot of those, but this is one of them. So you'll probably enjoy cruising through there. Um, you'll see people out drinking coffee on patios and whatnot. Just as a question, did you do a before and after case study to see if traffic slowed down as a result of this? So the question is, was there a before and after case study? And I was just thinking yeah, yesterday, right I wish I would have reached out to CDOT to ask them if they had before and after data. I don't know if it's been done yet. We haven't done it at Sustain Charlotte, but the city, I would like to see what the crash data and the uh, accident, uh, you know, the, the yeah. collision data would, would I, be. I believe they just did yeah. have the counters out. I don't know what the counters are. The numbers have been obviously in the last couple of years, not pre-pandemic. Um, I think this year is probably a good you know, we should, this should be a good idea of a solid, you know, base of what the numbers are. And I believe the counters are out maybe about a month ago. So uh, we'll, we'll probably find out soon on that. But this road diet here was pushing the threshold of what the city was comfortable with. And so this is a great example that we could use going forward to be, you know, other segments of roads that were four-way highways through neighborhoods to be able to have a road diet and adding multimodal facilities to them um, because, you know, the world did not fall apart by the amount of volume of cars. They'll find another way around and we have a connected bike network. So uh, it, it, it serves, it's not like the, the greatest example, but it's going to serve as other examples and other ways to prove the, the proof of concept that this can be built and we could still move cars as well and more safely. Yeah, this, so this was a four lane with, with really no center turn lane before. So it's kind of a classic, you know, four to three with, with protected bike lanes added in, center, in a center turn lane. Is there a plan to upgrade? I don't know, I hope so. The question was, is there a plan to upgrade the flex posts? And I said, I'm not sure, but I hope so. You can see they've taken a lot of hits. So this is still a pretty high speed arterial, but speeds I believe are a lot slower than they were, as you can imagine. Especially coming down around this curve, cars were just, you know, probably doing 50, 55 miles an hour. And as you'll see in a minute, when we get past this curve, 
there's a lot of homes on this street, so people couldn't even walk across the street to the neighborhood park. There was no safe place to cross to get to the park. We're in the Plaza Midwood Business District. Yeah, well, it's my neighborhood business district, more or less. Yeah, there is. Yeah, the Burial Brewing is just right over there. <laughs> they have a rooftop, a really nice rooftop. There's a great coffee shop here called Giddy Goat. This is an amazing restaurant over here called Supperland. It's in an old church. That's cool, they have a DJ out here. Over here. Hey Elizabeth, how are ya? <laughs> so, uh, you were looking for... So this is all getting redeveloped here. Hey everybody, I just wanted to stop here for a second, a little break in the shade, but also just talk about this park. It's called Independence Park, and it's, um, it's a very old park. It was built in 1924 originally, 
And uh, we believe it was a John Nolan designed park. Is that right? Yeah, we're getting a head nod from um, the back there. Um, it's just been completely rebuilt. So there's two, there's two parts of it. We're gonna cruise through the first sec section, cross over Hawthorne Road, and then there's another section, but they've really just completely scraped it down and restored it, put in all new paths, apparently to try to restore the original vision of John Nolan. So it's parts, parts of it are still under construction. You'll see a lot of new trees, um, but this is, I think, it, I think at one time on the other side, the other segment of the park was, it was actually like a, a, a waterworks. It was a pond, it was the drinking water source for Charlotte at one time, if I remember. And then they drained it and built, built the first park in Charlotte, so. And one fun cool fact, history. if anybody is a Homeland fan, the one scene where Brody was down near a park and a bench and a stone, he removed the stone where the secret note was hidden, that was in, in this park on the other side, so. Our suburbs fit very well for Alexandria, Virginia, apparently, on film, so. <laughs> <laughs> this also let us cut out for folks that commute in from the east side. This eliminates five intersections that you don't have to go through now if you use the park paths. And so they put some ramps up and down to the intersection at Hawthorne. We're going to go through where the streetcar goes through. The streetcar bisects this park into two, two different zones, more or less. But they've saved this as one of the historic little... I don't, you know, obviously the water's not running right now, but the, yeah. there was a waterfall, there's a waterfall here and it kind of drink, you know, fills up this little pool. Yeah. It's kind of neat. So the old one sort of matched this? Before. Well, that is the old one. That, they, they actually didn't tear that down. Okay, yeah. That might be one of the few things yeah. that's original. Um, everything else is new pavement, new sod. Yeah. Some trees have stayed, but... A nice view of the skyline here too. Oh, yeah. Cool mural on this building. See if anybody, anybody takes a porta potty stop. A random porta potty. Yeah. This ball field has some cool um, seating, all oh, rock. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Rock yep. From the era. Just on the other side, so we're going to take this tunnel right here, and on the other side is a, a stadium, and uh, it had all, you know, the whole stadium was rock seating like that. Yeah. They just renovated the stadium, and I'm pretty sure they pulled out all the rock, all the rock seating. Charlotte yeah. has a, a strange obsession with tearing out all the old stuff yeah. and uh, replacing it with new stuff. Yeah. Out with the old and with the new. Yep. Kind of a fun looks little like tunnel. They, looks like they could have fixed this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For a short guy like me, it's not a problem. We're going right here. I didn't have my 360 camera. <laughs> <laughs> Get your act in the back. Little dip on that. Let's have a game today. I, I should know this, but I think this is where they play. I think this is where they, that's where the lacrosse team plays, maybe, oh, in the stadium. Professional lacrosse? I think so, yeah. Obviously, I'm not a lacrosse fan, since I don't know for sure, but. There might be some soccer games held here, too. Yeah. We have to make a little circle. This is uh, the Culinary Arts Building for the Community College. There's a lot of community college buildings around here. Charlotte, Piedmont, Community College. And now we're back on Little Sugar Creek Greenway here. And this is the steepest climb of the whole ride, so gear down. <laughs> Part of that, uh, part of the Sixth Street cycle track that we petitioned the city for, that we rode on early on in this tour. Um, 
we asked them to, to connect this greenway that we're on now, which runs along the east side of downtown, to another greenway that runs along the west side. So since that was our ask, that's exactly what it does. So that on this way. So the protected bike lane begins here. This is kind of the connection point on the east side, and that'll continue all the way to the other end of Uptown to a greenway on the west side called Irwin Creek Greenway. So that was basically the ask of the petition. Build us a protected bike lane from Little Sugar Creek Greenway to Irwin Creek Greenway. We don't care what street it's on, yeah. but connect the two greenways so we can get, get between them through downtown and make it protected. Yeah. And that petition was submitted in, I think, early 2016 to city council. And it was just officially opened last year. Nice. So it took a little while. Got her done. It took a little while, but yeah. it's because they wanted to, um, you know, they spent a long time trying to pick which street. They wanted to make sure they picked the street that would have the least impact on vehicles. Right. So they, they did time studies on every one of the east-west streets in Center City. Yeah. The amount of time that I spent trying to get this facility built, yeah. if I would have known, if I would have known then what I know now, I'm not sure I would have undertaken this. <laughs> I thought it would be a lot simpler. Yeah. I thought it really I, is extraordinary, though. I mean, it's just, you know, it's a good start, well built. You know, now it's just a matter of finishing a network so that people can truly get around. That's you know, right. That's right. To, meet their daily needs yeah and that's one of the one of the beautiful things about this particular project is it really spurred the city to do an entire study of downtown and looking at what they need to do to build a network downtown so this project kind of evolved into what they're calling the uptown cycle link which is a network of you know safe protected facilities like this in downtown and parts of it have been built um, but in other parts are funded, but not yet built. And then there's a few unfunded segments too. Right. But at least there's a vision and a lines on a map. And again, it's very impressive. Job well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>yeah very short ride on a protected bikeway and boom you're here yeah and that's the spectrum center so that is the basketball team is that correct that's right yeah the hornets yeah. yep yeah once we you know that um bridge we took yeah from the greenway you know that bridge is kind of the the entry point to the to, to downtown so yeah. which you know in charlotte they call uptown right right yeah downtown is uptown yeah and interestingly, it's called it's, it's called Uptown because the the main intersection up here, Trade and Tryon, which we're going to roll through. Yeah. Tryon Street's the high point of the ridge, so you right. you felt the climb felt we like just you, did. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, Center City is um, like I said, it's got it's got the reason it has you know we wanted green we wanted greenways or sorry we have yeah we have greenways on both the east and west sides because the greenways parallel the streams the creeks. Right. right. So we, we're yeah. kind of been riding up from the creek bed. Yeah. So it's called Uptown because it was the high point. Yeah, it was the high point. Yeah. A lot of people think it's just, a lot of people assume it's just a snooty, a snooty uh, southern term, you know, like. Yeah, we're, oh, we, uptown. we're uptown, yeah. We're not any of that downtown. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you heard me say this earlier, but the reason that this goes up on the sidewalk here is because this whole block is being re redeveloped. Yeah. This is the main library. It's been closed for a long time. Okay. Um, and they're building a very nice, you know, modern library here. Okay. So they're going to incorporate the cycle track as part of that redevelopment. Okay. I was wondering about that. It's kind of a tragedy. Wherever you see these new pieces of pavement, there used yeah. to be trees here. Uh, so in order to put the bike lane up here, yeah. they had to mow down an entire row of trees on this block, which was a little painful, but... Yeah. Really, it was because they're building this. <clears throat> it, this is the historic Carolina Theater over here. They're restoring the theater, um, building a hotel on top, and they've taken, what is it, two lanes for construction. Yeah. 
which didn't leave any room for cars and bikes. This guy represents gold, gold mining. Yeah, since, uh, that would make sense. Gold was, the fact that gold was discovered here in Charlotte is why it's a financial capital now. Okay. Turned out to not be near as big as the deposits though in California. So yeah, when they found gold in California, they all left. Yeah. They all left uh, North Carolina and said, yeah, <laughs> moving to moving out there. And then, then cotton was the thing. Yeah, that was that was the gold. That was the gold, right? Yeah. You know, we have a, um, like we did a strategic mobility plan that was finally passed last year. Yeah. And we advocated for a, a mode share goal to reduce, you know, the number of people driving alone from today's, you know, 76% to 50%. Yeah. And that was straight out of, that was straight out of uh, Austin's playbook. Yeah. So Austin has the same goal, as I'm sure you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so we said, look, Austin also has about three fourths of their population. Driving alone, um, if they can set a goal of 50% yeah. by 2040, so can we. Yeah. And uh, it took a lot of convincing. Yeah. Staff was like, ah, we don't know how we're gonna get there. That's, yeah. That seems pretty ambitious. So yeah, I, I've, I've shown that to some of our planners at CDOT too. I've, I've shared with them the goal that um, the mayor announced, I guess, yeah. uh, some years back. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and this is kind of our, our main art museum here, the Mint Museum. Okay. And then the Beckler Museum is the Museum of Modern Art. So yeah. Of our, our our museum corner here. Yeah. Night the night theater back there, performing arts theater. Okay. One of the few original buildings. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, still here, this old yeah, Catholic it's, church. It's really cool when you can you know, point to one one or two of the few that are still here. This building here, I mean, I don't I don't even know if it's quite done. It, that that just popped up in the last year. That, yeah. that whole high rise. That's the new Duke Energy. Yeah, your Duke last Energy six HQ. years has been like ours too. Just incredible building. Oh, stuff. every time I come down here, I feel like I see something new. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this where you, this whole building right here, all this glass, yeah. was a was a surface parking lot two years ago. Yeah. This Harvey B. Gant, this is an African American museum. Yeah. You can see how skinny it is. It was just that skinny building and then a massive parking lot. Wow. This is all new, obviously. Um, two different towers. But this was the uh, Charlotte Observer, the newspaper used to have this leafy suburban, you know, acre, you know, one block by one block or probably two blocks by two blocks yeah. site. And it was a big deal when they tore down, tore down the old Observer building and then, you know, these massive towers that replaced it. This tower, where this tower is, used to be a, um, a tire, one of the tire shops on this corner. Um, what a, you know, the real good years, like a Goodyear tire shop, one story building surrounded by parking. Probably less than seven, eight years ago. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>